Hi, everybody, and welcome to Love Fraud Live. So people who have been in a relationship with a sociopath frequently say that they were swept off their feet in a whirlwind romance. What exactly does that mean? I'm Donna Anderson, author of lovefraud.com, and tonight I'll explain seven reasons why sociopaths seem so romantic and why they're all fake. This is a live streaming show and I'll answer your questions at the end of this presentation. To join the chat or ask a question, please be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. Just click the subscription button below the window. Okay. Sociopaths employ seduction strategies designed to make you fall for them hard and fast. Here are seven of their strategies and why the romance with a sociopath is not at all what it seems to be. Strategy number one, sociopaths want to be with you all the time. They call for dates. They want to hang out. They jam up your calendar weeks in advance. They may go to great lengths to see you, driving long distances or even booking a flight. You may feel overwhelmed with the attention and believe that your new romantic interest is just so smitten with you that he or she cannot bear to be apart. Of course, sometimes they don't show up. And when that happens, they always have an excuse. They suddenly had to work late, or their car broke down, or their mother died. I actually heard that one. The real reason they don't show up is that they are also involved with someone else. Here's strategy number two. Sociopaths are in contact with you all the time. They keep in touch, calling, texting and emailing you constantly. Whether it's a long distance involvement and they're calling you from the other side of the world or they just left your house. You just keep hearing from them. Again, you interpret this as a sign of their romantic interest. But the truth is, this is the beginning of them keeping tabs on you. In other words, establishing control. Here's strategy number three, romantic texts and emails. The messages you get from this person are mushier than anything ever produced by Hallmark cards. Or perhaps they're erotic, making you feel like the sexiest person alive. You may have never heard such sentiments from a love interest and believe that the touching or exciting words reflect his or her true feelings. After all, who would lie about such things? Well, sociopaths do. Often, they don't even write the messages. Here's a story that I posted on Love Fraud. There were these two Nigerian scammers who copied quotes out of a book called For You, My Soulmate. Then they used the quotes to steal 1.6 million pounds from a British woman. My sociopathic ex-husband, James Montgomery, stole an erotic story that was written by one of his other girlfriends. He changed the names and sent it to me and to multiple other women. In fact, Montgomery had a whole file full of poems and other pithy sayings that he recycled among all his new targets. From the sociopath's point of view, if it works once, use it again. Here's strategy number four, showering you with gifts. Sociopaths may give you all kinds of gifts, sometimes without an occasion. They'll say, just because I was thinking of you. Well, that's not all that unusual when you're being courted, but where exactly did the gift come from? And was it purchased just for you? Ladies, Beware of the beau who slips up behind you and fastens a necklace around your neck. 
When jewelry doesn't arrive in a gift box, there's a very good chance that it was stolen from another woman. I had this one happen to me also. After discovering that James Montgomery was cheating on me, I contacted and eventually met with one of his other victims. She opened her pocketbook and pulled all kinds of jewelry out of it. Is any of this yours? She asked. Well, much to my surprise, she showed me some of my own bracelets that I didn't even know were missing. Then there was one necklace that Montgomery had given her that wasn't mine, but I had one just like it. Apparently, when he did shop, he shopped for all his women at once. Here's strategy number five. They're very quickly willing to say, I love you. Now, the purpose of dating is to find a romantic partner. If you're like most people, you've had your heart broken once or a million times, so you're cautious about revealing your feelings. Sociopaths, however, quickly proclaim their love, telling you that you're the person they've been waiting for all their lives. And they immediately want to move in together, get married, and start a family. They may paint this glorious verbal picture of your life together, complete with everything you ever wanted, completely surrounded by a white picket fence. Now, you would never say such things unless you meant it. So you assume that the sociopath means it. Well, they don't. In fact, they are incapable of feeling love and don't know what it is. But they do know that if they say the words, I love you, they get what they want. Now, in some cases, once you've committed to them, getting married, moving in together, getting pregnant, they stop saying, I love you. But other times, the sociopaths keep saying those three little words, and that's how they maintain control over you, so that they can keep exploiting you. Here's strategy number six. Sex, sex, and more sex. Sociopaths usually push for a physical relationship very quickly. In fact, I've heard from numerous people who met the sociopaths online and said they had sex on the first date. Many people also say that the sex with the sociopath was the best they ever had, at least in the beginning of the relationship when the sociopath was paying attention to them. Now, sociopaths may tell you that you are irresistible and they can't get enough of you, but the truth is that they are simply hardwired for sex. They want a lot of sex from a lot of people in a lot of different ways. They have boundless energy, no inhibitions, and they indulge frequently. So even if you're with a sociopath multiple times a day, well, don't assume that you are the only partner. Here's number seven, the grand gesture. Sociopaths sometimes pull out all the stops to proclaim their love. They'll spend a lot of money or put on a big display, often in front of an audience. For example, I knew of a woman who ditched a sociopath because he was borrowing money from her and not paying it back. Now, this sociopath, who was very handsome, got all dressed up in a suit, bought a massive bouquet of roses, and showed up at the office tower where she worked. The guy called her and asked her to come down to the atrium. She was reluctant, but he talked her into it. So once she got there, right there in the atrium, in front of dozens of her co-workers and other professionals, he got on his knee, he presented the roses, and he proposed. The woman accepted, much to her later regret. So those are the seven strategies. When a sociopath is focused on you, showering you with attention and affection, you feel like every romantic fantasy you ever had is being fulfilled. Unfortunately, it's all fake. So if sociopaths can't love, how do they pull this off? Well, they observe other people, 
They watch TV and movies. They read books. So even if they can't feel love, they learn what it's supposed to look like. Plus, they've been doing this all their lives. They've learned through trial and error how to get potential targets to fall for them. Sociopaths target you because you have something that they want. Every single romantic gesture has an ulterior motive. So that's why it's so important to be on the lookout for sociopaths if you're in the dating market. To protect yourself, follow these three easy steps. First of all, know that sociopaths exist and that they are everywhere. Secondly, know the warning signs of love fraud. I explain them all in my book called Red Flags of Love Fraud, 10 Signs You're Dating a Sociopath. There's a link in the description below. And third, trust your instincts. If you get a gut feeling that something is wrong, it probably is. So that's the presentation for tonight. Next, I'll answer your questions. But first, here's my little speech about subscribing to this channel. Now, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you may wonder why I keep saying this. Well, first of all, I would really love to have you as a subscriber. But also, this is a bit of patter to take up some time. It allows people who tune into the video late a time to catch up before I start answering questions. So please be sure to subscribe so you can ask a question and join the chat. You only need to be a subscriber for one minute to participate in the chat or ask a question. And when you subscribe, you'll automatically be notified about all my new videos. Plus by subscribing, you'll boost the distribution of Love Fraud Live so you'll help to spread the word about the dangerous sociopaths who live among us. So let's take a look, see if we have some questions today. I see some comments, see what we have. So Mystique says, do they become obsessed with their partners like narcissists? Yes. Let me clarify something just um, to, to understand the terminology, which this is something that I've spoken about quite a few times um, on these videos, but if you're new, you may not have heard it. Um, when I use the word sociopath, I use it as an umbrella term that covers multiple personality disorders, which are antisocial, narcissistic, borderline, histrionic, and psychopathic personality disorders. Uh, essentially, what all these people have in common is that they are exploiters. They use and exploit people. Um, this is actually what the word sociopath originally meant when, it when the word first came into use, it meant anything pathological in a social relationship. Um, it is no longer an official uh, diagnosis, but it's a very convenient term to be able to talk about all these people as a group, as a category of personality disorder. So when I talk about sociopaths, I am also talking about narcissists. And, um, even people who have antisocial personality disorder, um, one of the traits and the diagnostic criteria has to do with narcissism uh, in, for antisocial personality disorder. So there is a lot of overlap uh, among all of these disorders. And what I, when I refer to sociopaths, I am referring to all those people. So the answer is yes, that uh, they all tend to obsess over their romantic partners. Okay. Okay, so Stephen Swagel asks, would you say that sociop sociopathy in people presents on a spectrum akin to autism? So some sociopaths are more extreme and others are less so. Uh, yes, that's absolutely the case. Um, these disorders, and again, I'm referring to all of the disorders that we talked about, um, antisocial, narcissistic, borderline, histrionic, and psychopathy, they all are considered a syndrome and a continuum. 
And so what that means is a syndrome is a group of traits and characteristics that tends to hang together. Uh, for example, for antisocial personality disorder, you talk about um, grandiosity, you talk about deception, you talk about all these different things that they do. So you have this whole list of, of behaviors and then any individual can engage in any of these behaviors to greater or lesser degrees. So what you end up with is this whole matrix of all these behaviors and all these different degrees. So yes, it absolutely is possible for some people to be worse than others. In fact, the sociopaths, narcissists, antisocials who are kind of at the low to the mid range of the scale, they're the ones that are hardest to identify because they can so often appear to be normal. I mean, the, you know, the ones who are vicious all the time, I mean, they're reasonably easy to spot and, and you can stay away from them. But the, those who appear to be human, they're, they can be a little harder to spot. So um, absolutely, yes, this is a continuum. It is a spectrum and, and all these disorders are, are on a, a spectrum or a range. Okay. All right, so um, Josie says it seems the relationships are only transactional for them, for that they, they can get what they want out of it. Uh, yep, you're absolutely right. I mean, every single relationship that these folks get involved in, it has to do with getting something out of you. That, that, that's all they're looking for. They, they do not have any desire to be to, for human connection. It, it just doesn't mean anything to them. Okay, so Kaina says, why do they continue to come back even though boundaries have been set in place? Well, there can be a lot of reasons for that. Um, sometimes, if you're talking about a romantic relationship, sometimes uh, they consider you to be their property. And if they're not done with their property, uh, they're just going to keep coming after you. Um, sometimes it's all a game for them. I mean, keep in mind that, you know, this isn't about love. This isn't about human connection. It's about getting something from you. And um, sometimes they, they're just entertaining themselves. They, they want to, you know, keep chipping away to see that even if you have put these boundaries in place, uh, they want to see if they can get you to break their boundaries. I mean, if, for them, it's like entertainment. So, that's why it's so important to engage in no contact. I mean, you, you can't negotiate with these people and, and they're not going to let you go. You have to decide that you've had enough and you no longer want this person in your life. So, so that's the idea. Um, yeah, boundaries don't really mean anything to them. Uh, for them, it's just a speed bump to, to see if they can overcome it, if, if they're, you know, are bound and determined that they're going to come after you. So you're the one that needs to be strong and firm and have no contact whatsoever. I mean, that's the secret. You do not respond. No matter what they try to do, you do not respond. Unless, of course, they come to your house and then you call the cops. But, uh, you know, we, you don't negotiate with them. You, you shut it down and then you do not respond. Okay, so Ellen says, um, do male sociopaths purposely target married or abused women? Um, yeah, yes. What they're looking for is vulnerability. And although they not they may not necessarily go after an abused woman, they will go after someone who they know is vulnerable. And if someone has been abused, they're vulnerable. And one of the things, and I can't tell you how many times I've heard this, you know, somebody um, divorces an abusive husband or gets out of an abusive relationship and they meet somebody who just seems to be the knight in shining armor and is, is just so wonderful for, to them and is totally different from the relationship that they just left. So they fall for this person and sooner or later 
this guy turns out to be worse. I, I can't tell you how many times I've heard that. So, um, yes, they, they will do that, but they're not necessarily looking for abuse specifically. They are looking for a vulnerability. Now, yes, they will go after married women. I mean, married women are great from their point of view because they don't want to talk. They don't want to lose their marriage. So, you know, sociopaths can, you know, practically be carte blanche and get whatever they want because all they have to do is threaten to tell the husband. So married women have very little leverage in these situations and sociopaths know that. So that's one of the reasons why they go after married women. Because if, if they can, sedu- first of all, it's fun, you know, for them to seduce someone who's married. And secondly, they can get away with a lot because the married woman does not want to be exposed. Okay. Yeah, Katrina points out that um, it's unreal how they all seem to play by the same book and how easy it is to get played. Yeah, it, 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 it really is. Um, <laughs> that's why I was able to write the book, you know, 10 signs of red flags of love fraud, 10 signs you're dating a sociopath, because I kept hearing the same stories and tactics and strategies over and over and over again. And yeah, they, they it, it's, it's like there's some kind of, you know, dating for sociopath school somewhere that they all go to. It's, it's, it's amazing. But yes, that's exactly what happens. Okay, so Patricia says, hello from England. Uh, glad you're joining us. It must be late there. My goodness. Um, yeah, I've heard stories like this before. Her, her sister is a sociopath, and she threw her husband or partner out of the house and locked him out. Um, yep, yeah, that's a, a typical sociopathic trick. I, I've certainly heard of that on multiple occasions. Okay, so Queen says, how do you get the sociopath you are dating to leave you alone after breaking up and asking for space? Block on social media? I think he may be dangerous. Um, that's exactly what I was talking about before. No contact. And no contact means no contact. So once you break it off, you do not talk to this person on the phone. You do not um, answer a text. You do not send any emails. You do not even go visit their social media page. You block them on social media. You certainly don't allow them to come near you. You have to make the decision that you're done with it and and you do not respond. Now, sociopaths can get very persistent in these situations and they may call you and call you and call you and call you and they may call you 22 times or maybe 52 times and then you, you don't pick up, you don't pick up, you don't pick up and then finally on the 53rd time you pick up and say, leave me alone. Well, what you've just done is you've taught the sociopath that after 53 phone calls, you'll pick up the phone. So you, you figure out a way to block them and you, you do not have contact. This is your decision. It's not the sociopath's decision. So you're the one who has to implement all of these uh, methods to, to shut it down. <clears throat> all right, so Noreen says, I should have listened to him early in the relationship. He told me that he was broken and damaged. He told me that he had antisocial personality disorder and was institutionalized. Yeah, you know, um, I've heard of that happening in quite a few situations where the person actually admitted that they were disordered and, and said they had been diagnosed. This one here was actually institutionalized. When you hear those words, it's a good idea to believe them. Um, But often we don't know what they mean. You know, know, antisocial personality disorder, what's that? Does that mean you're a hermit? Because you sure don't seem like a hermit. You're pretty chatty and you like to hang around. So I'm really confused. So I'll just set that aside and and keep going. Yeah. now you know. Now you know, or, or, well, let me put it this way. 
back when I first launched Love Fraud in 2005, nobody knew anything. But it's been 16 years now, and there's a lot more awareness of these disorders than there was uh, a long time ago. So now you may have more awareness, but even so, it, it, it still may not sink in exactly what it means for somebody to have these disorders. So you can't beat yourself up for not being informed. Um, all you can do at this point is move forward and recognize that if you ever hear those words coming from somebody again, that you take that at face value and you get rid of that person as quickly as possible. Okay. All right, so Stephen is saying, my ex-wife is a sociopath, but her behavior was nuanced. Sometimes textbook sociopathic behavior, other times more sincere. That made it difficult to understand and recover. Is that common? Well, yeah, I mean, that's what I was talking about in that there is this matrix and there are some who are not as bad as others. And there, that those who are to the low to mid range of the disorder, they are hard to figure out. I mean, they, they're hard to spot. Plus, sociopaths can appear to be normal as long as it suits their purpose. You, you know, I mean, they 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 can they can put on the act. They can seem to be caring and cheerful and 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 trustworthy and you know devoted to you and, and everything like that. So they're really good. And, and some are very sophisticated and know exactly how to play it. So it's understandable. I mean, sometimes they are very hard to spot. And that's why it's so important to understand, to pay attention to your intuition, because your body knows I mean, your, your instincts know, your intuitions knows, and a lot of times people get this feeling that there's something wrong or just have a, a you know, that it's just not making sense or, or they get the, the chills or the creeps or the hair on the back of their neck goes up or, or whatever it is, or they get a sudden flash that the person is lying. You have to pay attention to that because sometimes they're really slick and you can't really see the bad behavior because they're so good at acting and they're so good at covering up. But, but your body will know, your intuition will know, and if you ever get a warning sign, you must take it seriously. Okay. Yeah, so Wendy says, my ex-boyfriend used to give me flowers and write me letters were so profound. I always felt cared and loved by him. And that's why it's so hard for me to accept he is who he is. Yeah. I mean, it, it can be really difficult because it's very difficult to wrap your brain around what this disorder really is and just how fake it all is. The, the key to it is, well, there's two things. First of all, they literally do not have the ability to love. I mean, I, they, they just can't do it. They, they, they don't know what it is. They don't know what it feels like. So they, they can't do it. And secondly, as one of the commenters said earlier, you know, everybody in these situations, all these sociopaths, it's very transactional. I mean, they are looking for a person to exploit, a person to take advantage of. They're very opportunistic. You know, something may just you know, walk in front of them and, and they'll figure out a way to take advantage of the person. So it, it can be difficult to really grasp what it is, but it, it's very important because there's just too many of these people around us. You know, it's 12% of the population. We're talking about 31 to 39 million people in the United States have these disorders. I mean, that's a lot of people. So you really do need to be aware because they're everywhere. Oh, Patricia, well, um, thank you for being interested in buying my book. Uh, actually, I've got quite a few books. If you um, look in the description below the video window, they're, they're all listed there. 
and you might find some stuff that's uh, that will really explain um, what these disorders are all about. You might be interested in one that I have called Understanding the Sociopath, and this is where I, I explain um, what it is that, that they are. So, okay, well, let's see, we've got one more question here. All right, so Wendy says that the guy has bought her land. Um, if the person is a sociopath, nothing good can come of it. I, I mean, even if he did something like that, you, you, you got to get rid of this person because it's, 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 it's bad. I mean, if he bought you land, I guarantee you that there's some kind of a catch to it. Or maybe he said he bought you land, but it's really all in his name or who knows what. But, you know, if, if you are sure that the person is disordered or at least have a pretty good idea that the person is disordered, you need to protect yourself. And the best way to do that is to end the involvement. So, okay. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for joining me this evening. Uh, you had a lot of good questions. I appreciate that. And we'll be back next Tuesday, uh, 8 p.m., for the next episode of Love Fraud Live. Thanks a lot.